What's good, y'all? This is Will Gittens. This is Five on Five with I Am Musicology. What got me into music is uh, my father, really. My father, shout out to Sterling and Gittins. He is a singer, songwriter, musician. And just him being in his prime in music is when I was growing up. He was so great in that that I just used to look at him and be in, in admiration and just be like, I wanted to do that someday. So in essence, my dad is my, my first and biggest inspiration into getting to music. Questions, the creative components I use um, during my music making process is, weirdly enough, just real life experiences, you know, um, and sometimes it's not my own, sometimes it could be a friend, you know, a friend could just have a conversation with me like, man, last night I was with this crazy chick, man, and she did this, and I'm like, yo, that's crazy, writes a song. <laughs> So um, for me, even in my personal life, if I get my heart broken, if, if I, I'm really feeling a, ch a chick, I just, I write about that, you know? And one of my gifts is that as a man, I'm vulnerable and very transparent and I'm able to transfer my feelings onto write, into writing a lot better than the average male, I would say. And so I think that's what is my, my superpower in a sense. It's like a lot of men in general are, are, are it's harder for them to be vulnerable and transparent in certain things as pertains to their feelings and I don't even care man, that's who I am so when I write these songs, that's what gets the fans. <laughs> so Zodiac, how did that come about? It started off, um, I was moving from Atlanta to LA and because of anyone knowing in 2020 when the pandemic was happening, it was um, a very improbable to move anywhere, you know, LA. We thought it was gonna be, oh, we move from Atlanta, go stay in Nashville for about a week or two so that we could find a spot and then, you know, say travel to LA, but it ended up being two, three months. So I was in my parents' house just chilling, you know, and I just was in my mom's, like the little foyer area. And I, I was like, let me just come up with a jingle. And I came up with it in five minutes. You know, this is my age, this is my son, this is where I live. And I was like, all right, that's kind of cool. But then I put it on like platform and I was like, wait a minute. I was like, this is kind of corny. But I was like, you know what, whatever. Cause it's TikTok, I don't even care. And so I put it up and then within a week or two, there was like a thousand videos made. And I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, and fast forward about a month or two and it's like 50 and 70 and then 80 and, and it just kept rising. I'm like. It got to the point where I looked at my brother, I was like, we need to make this into a record. And so that's what we did. We dropped it December of 2020. And um, it's amassed about 5 million streams across all the platforms and stuff. It, it, um, it was probably the biggest trend in TikTok in 2021. My thoughts on being an independent artist is for the most part positive. Um, the freedom to release what I want to and when I want to is still the most like freeing and important thing for me. You know, I'm from so many different places. So my versatility is something that I take pride in and something that a lot of my fans like about me. You know, you could get an R&B song, you could get an island, Afro island type song, or you could get a pop song or acoustic, you know, and there's so many different layers to my musicality and my artistry. If I was with a label, they would have been like, hey, nah, bro, you're gonna have to stay right here. And I try to leave, they're like, ah, get your ass back in here. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, it's being independent. I could write a song. I wrote a song two nights ago, and I'm listening to it. I'm, of course, I'm gonna pitch it to other artists first. And if no one takes it, I could drop it. And it's just like that, you know, get the artwork, get the mix and master. Um, the downside of it is that, uh, of course, there's, we talk about the monopoly in the music industry or the labels now, instead of beating Spotify and these other apps, they have to partner with them and get their stakes in there. And so if there's a hundred slots to get your song heard, they, they, these labels fill up all the slots. So it's kind of makes it an almost impossible task for an independent artist to break through, even with hit records. There's a lot of artists that's cracked the code. You know, people talk about that Russ guy all the time and, you know, but it hasn't been a male black singer that's really pushed through the, the independent world, like outside of like a Brent Fires, but I'm talking about an artist that doesn't have any major label association, you know, and so that's something that I am going to, to change the game in, and I already know that. 
I have a catalog that's crazy enough. I know I just need to align and build a type of team and it's out of here. What's next for me is just releasing a lot of music continuously, independently. Um, I have a song coming out called DND, stands for Do Not Disturb. That's going to be a smash -roni. You know, I have um, a couple of projects, a couple, probably two EPs and maybe my first album. Just in general, just expect to get a lot of music from me. Um, a lot of releases, songs that I've wrote for other big A-list artists. And I can't really disclose the songs yet, but just know that I have some exciting things coming with some of your favorite artists. You could find me at Will Gittens, W-I-L-L-G-I-T-T-E-N-S, and that's everything, you know, at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, everything. Bless.